Hello friends, welcome back to All on Law. This is a quick pediatrics and today I'm gonna talk about hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Okay guys, so name itself indicates it's a hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So the left ventricle is really very small, means the patient will be in a critical condition because left ventricle is really very important because it pumps out the blood to the various parts of the body. If left ventricle is not working properly, okay, if this is a left ventricle, this is left ventricle, and this pumps the blood through aorta to different parts of the body. And if this is not working, means different parts of the body, especially brain, okay, liver, kidney, and pancreas, so many important organs in the body will not get the blood. And hence, the mortality is really very high in these patients. Okay, guys. So let's talk about this briefly. I have to draw this and show you okay right this is a left ventricle and this is a right ventricle and this is tricuspid and this is a mitral valve okay right so look at this over here it's very small compared to the right ventricle the left ventricle is really very small it should have been the same size as that of what you call right ventricle so this syndrome consists of the other important features that is aortic wall hypoplasia aortic wall hyper hypoplasia so aorta as if the aortic wall acts as a stenosis or atresia right and the hypoplasia of ascending aorta if this is ascending aorta and it is hypoplasia okay hypoplasia of ascending aorta as you know, this is the left ventricular hypoplasia is there, right? The mitral wall stenosis or atresia can be there. This is a mitral wall, right? So it will be stenosis or atresia. So look at the problems, so many problems, okay? Okay, so the patient of these, this uh, suffering from this disease, they will have a right ventricle, single right ventricle, and that provides a blood to the pulmonary system the system circulation via the PDA and the coronary system via retrograde flow after crossing the PDA. Okay, guys? Right? So, if I have to draw like this, and this is the what you call pulmonary artery and aorta, the PDA connects like this. And so, the blood will flow here like this, then this, this, this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way, right? Rather than this way. Okay? That's it, okay? So what's the epidemiology? The second most common congenital heart defect resulting presenting in the first week of the life, okay? And it's 25% of all cardiac deaths in the first year of the life are due to this disease, HLHS, okay? Hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Now let's talk about the sign and symptoms. Since this is a very critical condition, the signs and symptoms are really very important. Okay, first remember because the right ventricle is really very big, the patient will have a hyperdynamic right ventricular impulse. Hyperdynamic right ventricle impulse, and the patient will have a single S2, single S2, okay, because of the aortic stenosis. Or atresia and the pulse 
you know, it can be normal. The pulse can be normal or sometimes it's absent. Normal or absent. Right? There can be a gallop at the apex. Okay? There can be a gallop. Okay? The non-specific systolic murmur at the left sternal border. Systolic murmur at left sternal border. Left sternal border. LSB. Skin may have a characteristic grayish pallor. Okay. Now, if we have to diagnose the disease, clinically it's very evident and you have to take an x-ray. And the x-ray features are really very important for USMLE or MRCPCH appearing students. The chest x-ray shows cardiomegaly. Why? Because of the large right ventricle. Okay. And up increased pulmonary vascular markings. Markings, remember, and a pulmonary edema. Remember, in USML examination or MRCPCH examination, they can give a characteristic clinical features of a hyperplastic left heart syndrome and ask you which of the following findings could be seen on X ray. Definitely, they will not give you cardiomegaly, rather, they will be interested in asking or knowing about the increased pulmonary vascular markings and the pulmonary edema okay and what's the diagnostic choice diagnostic test of choice is echo remember okay so now the treatment part usually there is a no intervention because this is a really very high mortality so there is a surgery known as a three stage surgery that is Norwood gland procedure and fontan procedure fontan okay so just briefly i will list tell you about the norwood procedure the pulmonary trunk is used to reconstruct the hypoplastic aorta you know there is a hypoplastic aorta in these patients the pulmonary trunk is used to reconstruct the hypoplastic aorta and the right ventricle subsequently becomes the functional left ventricle. So we are going to make right ventricle as a left ventricle function similar to left ventricle. Why? Because the left ventricle in the hypoplastic left heart syndrome is a really very small and it's a non-functional almost. Because why we need the left ventricle? Because it has to supply blood to the whole part of the body. Right? Yes. The This... And what they do later, that this leaves the pulmonary arteries connected but separated from the heart. The pulmonary blood flow is then re-established via systemic to pulmonary conduits from the subclavian arteries to the pulmonary arteries. Right? The gland procedure, this is a gland procedure, three-stage procedure we discussed, Norwood procedure, now the gland procedure. The superior vena cava, you know superior cava that opens in the right ventricle, right, right auricle, right? Uh, it opens in the right auricle. The superior vena cava is connected to the right pulmonary artery. Right pulmonary artery restoring what we call partial venous return to the lungs. That's a gland procedure. And the front hand procedure, the inferior vena cava is anastomosed to the pulmonary arteries resulting in the complete venous diversion from the systemic circulation to the lungs. So phantom is for IVC, remember, and gland is for superior vena cava. And Norwood procedures is where we talk about the pulmonary trunk. Okay, guys? So now the other procedure, other treatment is a heart transplant. This alternative occurs either as a primary intervention. Well, it depends. Okay, so heart transplant can be done. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for subscribing and please do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to share our videos with your friends. Thank you. Take care.